Welcome to my YouTube channel and to my train room. For this week's project I'm going to take a really cheap and nasty freight car and make some simple improvements to it. So let me get the camera turned around and I will show you what I'm doing. I have here a really cheap ready to run freight car that I am going to attempt to improve. The prototype is one of the 52 foot war emergency gondolas that were built um, starting in 1943 mostly out of lumber because the steel plate available was going to the military. The bodywork is fairly well detailed at least I'm happy with the detailing of it. The trucks are crap and it has truck mounted couplers so the first thing to do is to get rid of those um, also, it's broken at the end, but since I have the piece that broke off, I can easily repair that. Okay. This is the first time I've modified any of this manufacturer's freight car, so I'm just experimenting. I wonder if the brake wheel comes off. Yes, it does. That will make this a lot easier to position. And that's just going to go back in there and the repair should be invisible. If the prototype was an older gondola I wouldn't worry too much about the repair. I would just weather it heavily and assume that it's beaten up. But since the prototype was built from a 1942 design and the earliest reference I've been able to find of them actually being built is November of 1943. I'm going to have to run it in brand new condition on my layout. <clears throat> For the trucks, I have uh, Titchy trucks. Actually, these represent a different design of truck to what came on the model. So let me run off to my computer and find out if the uh, prototype car can run on these trucks or not. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Well I've been up and checked on my computer and I found a reference to the prototype which said that they were supplied with Bettendorf trucks. And this box here says Bettendorf trucks so I'm just going to use them. There's some ridges on the top I think it's flash. I'm just going to get rid of it quickly. Right on the end as well. Well, apart from repainting a few areas, that's all I'm going to do. There's these plastic tabs that are stuck through here. I'm thinking once those are painted they'll pretty much disappear and obviously I've got to paint the floor to look like unpainted wood. Right, how am I going to mount these trucks? That's the question. Well while the camera was off I fixed the bolsters. The trucks that I took out of here had great big mounting pins and they were a lot bigger than the screws that I'm using to mount the new truck so I had to put some plastic tube in I needed three thicknesses of tube. I had to drill it out to the right size and then fill it up. This one I also had to put some fill around it because I managed to break it with the drill. But now those have been filed down to the right height and the new trucks will fit on quite nicely. Before I put the trucks on, what I need to do is cut some notches in the end cells for the couple of boxes. Not quite sure what the best tool for this is. I'm so glad that broke in the middle, not the on the outside. I'm starting with an undersized notch that I'm going to gradually enlarge because I don't want it to be loose. 
and I think that's about the right size now. Well I've got both ends opened up and since I don't have the right size screws I'm going to glue the couple of boxes in I know that makes it very difficult to replace the couple if I ever need to but I'm hoping that won't happen. Well I test fitted it with the trucks on and the couplers were both sitting a little bit high so what I've done is filed down the bolsters a little bit it now sits about half a millimetre lower than it did I think it looks better anyway it was probably high before but something else I have to do is to give it some more truck swing because they don't go very far before they hit the, uh, the, the coupler wings and since I might well be using this in a sharply curved spur I need to give it more room hopefully I can trim these off without breaking them well a couple has come off no biggie I will just re-glue it <coughs> I'm going to use plyo bond instead of the solvent because that way it will fill the gaps and give a better joint I'm going to have to give that some time to go hard, but I can reinstall the trucks in the meantime. And now the trucks will swing at least twice as far. Right, the trick with trucks is to get one of them so that it turns freely but doesn't rock, and to get the other one so that it rocks just a little bit. That way the car should track fairly well. And the couple of heights now perfect. I'm not going to couple it up to the to the gauge because the plier bond hasn't gone hard yet and I don't want to pull them off. Next thing I need to do is paint the floor. If it wasn't already too high up in the car, I would just put a thin piece of basswood in there. But I don't have that luxury. I remember not so long ago masking the inside of a gondola and it turned out disastrous. But that was a completely different reason. I'm just going to spray that with a white primer because that way the wood colour paint will cover better. So let me go out and do that and I'll be right back. So I sprayed the floor with white primer and then what I do is I get a fairly thin wash of this mm -hmm. paint here. What it is is a kind of paint that I used a piece of basswood as a sample to match it and then I'm going to water it down a bit so that it goes on as a wash and doesn't quite cover the white and that seems to give a reasonable uh, reproduction of unpainted wood okay I'll let that dry and then I will come back and fill in the grain. Well my wood colour has had time to dry now I'm just going to make a very light wash of dark grey very thin I don't want the wash too heavy 
because it's meant to represent a fairly new car. Well, I've given it time to dry and now the floor looks a lot more like unpainted wood than it did before. I don't really like the casting texture of it, but it would have been a real pain to be able to sand it inside the gondola. And I didn't feel like uh, completely starting again. That would be almost the, at the point of throwing away the car and buying a more expensive one. All right, there's a few areas where the paint has crept in under the masking tape. So let's see if I can scrape those a little bit. Now it doesn't want to scrape, I'm gonna to have to touch it up. But I've got to try to match the color for the outside anyway to paint over those tabs. I'm gonna start with the brown oxide, see if that works. I don't think it's going to. I think the car is a lot redder than that. Let's try this paint. That's another one of my sample pots and that's more of a brick red. It's way too bright but what happens if I mix it in with that I'm not really liking that but I have this brown here called chocolate bar brown Now that is really close, straight out of the bottle. And I'm going to call that done. Let's put it on the track and see what it looks like. Well that's all for this week. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.